Hi there, and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1, Tutorial 16a. This is the first of three related tutorials where we will look at inventory costing methods. Tutorial 16a focuses on the weighted average periodic method of inventory costing. So we have only one learning objective for this tutorial, and that is to review how to determine ending inventory and cost of goods sold under the weighted average periodic costing approach. This tutorial is based on the Newman Valve Company example, so please download the correct file so you can follow along, and please review the background information before proceeding. This problem has four requirements, and our objective is to determine the ending inventory value and cost of goods sold for the month of August under four different uh, approaches. Using weighted average periodic will be covered in tutorial A. Weighted average perpetual will be covered in tutorial 16B. And periodic and FIFO perpetual will be covered in tutorial 16C. So let's begin. Again, our requirement is to determine the ending inventory value and cost of goods sold for Newman for the month of August under the assumption that the company uses the weighted average periodic inventory costing approach. We begin with starting to construct the cost of goods available for sale. And we start with the beginning inventory that's given 500 units at a cost of $15. That means the total value of beginning inventory is $7,500. We then include our purchase of 250 units at $17 for a total of $4,250. Then we have a second purchase of 100 units at $20 for a total of $2,000. And when we combine our beginning inventory plus our first and second purchases, that gives us cost of goods available for sale. So what we have here are 500 units in beginning inventory plus 250 in the first purchase plus 100 in the second purchase for a total number of units available for sale of 850. And if we add the dollar values associated with that, so our beginning 7,500 plus the cost of the first purchase and the cost of the second gives us $13,750 for the 850 units purchased. And then what we do is we develop a single weighted average unit cost. We take the sum of all the costs from the purchases and we divide by the number of units purchased. That's what this calculation shows, $13,750 in total cost divided by 850 units gives us a weighted average cost for the period of $16.18. Finally, if we want to determine what our cost of goods sold is, we simply take the number of units that are sold. So we know that there are 200 units sold and then another 450 for a total of 650 units sold times the average cost of $16.18 gives us a cost of goods sold of $10,515. Make sure that you do not base this on the selling price. A common mistake students make is to use the sales price to calculate this number for whatever reason, and that's wrong. We have to use the cost of goods. And then once we know what our cost of goods available is, if we subtract our cost of goods sold, $13,750 minus cost of goods sold of $10,515 should give us $3,235. 850 units minus 650 is 200. And if we multiply that 200 times our average cost of 1618, that should also equal 3,235. It does. It's out just a little bit due to rounding. Might be off by a dollar or something. But basically, this proves that the ending inventory is 32.35 calculated by taking the total costs minus the cost of goods sold or by multiplying the ending inventory times the weighted average rate. So now for some key points to remember. First, the weighted average periodic approach computes a single weighted average cost based on the number of units and the cost of goods available. And we determine the cost of goods available by taking the beginning inventory plus any purchases. So that's cost of goods available. We then take that single cost rate and we use that number to calculate both the ending inventory and the cost of goods sold over the entire year. It could be year, it could be month, whatever the period is. So this concludes tutorial 16a on the weighted average periodic method. Now you should be ready to move on to tutorials 16b and c. 16b will focus on weighted average perpetual and 16c will focus on FIFO.